We specialize in uh, a particular type of cell called a fibroblast. And this is certainly not included in uh, the immune system as you think of it with right. your branch and your adaptive branch. Um, but with a lot of the research coming out, you know, it, it's very interwoven with how the immune system responds to really anything in the body. And it makes sense because fibroblasts are these cells that provide all the structural support for our whole body. They're in every single organ. You know, they get a lot of uh, media attention in the skin. Everybody wants to sell you a skin product that rejuvenates your fibroblasts, but they make up your spleen. They make up, you know, your lungs. Every organ needs these fibroblasts. They're producing collagen, matrix, all sorts of things to, so that all the organs can function as they normally function and all the cells that are there can perform their job. And tumors need to be able to produce the same things that an organ has. They're kind of a, a neo-organ themselves. They need blood flow, just as an organ does. They need tolerance from the immune system to not be killed, just like an organ does. And they also need structure um, to be able to coordinate all of that. And that is where the fibroblasts come in very often, and especially in solid tumors. Um, and so all of the fibroblasts are there. A lot of times these cancer cells are able to manipulate fibroblasts, right? Because normally the fibroblasts will be somewhat suppressive to new growth. They want to maintain this homeostasis, oh. you know, everything operating as normal. So they kind of encase it or just kind of keep it like, okay, these are all, you know, when you get an architect for a house, you have to make sure the foundation can hold the weight of the staircase, this and that. Not necessarily that it collapses immediately, but all of those dynamics are important to make sure for the longevity that things are, like you said, homeostasis or, or, or in order and non-problematic. So fibroblasts, actually in function of also being like the bricks that make it up also serve as kind of like a support to kind of keep it you know healthy and controlled and what you're saying is cancer cells actually manipulate them to not be able to keep it in the same place well what they'll do is you know they kind of need the fibroblasts in a lot of cases and certain tumors rely on them more than others so it depending on what kind of cancer you're looking at you know the role the fibroblasts are playing can differ slightly Mm -hmm. But what they can do is kind of trick the fibroblasts in a way into going into this wound healing response, right? If you get a cut, the fibroblasts that are normally resting, you know, in your skin will kind of come online. We call them activated and they will begin repairing that area. They'll make, you know, scar tissue that bridges across. You'll notice that the skin gets tight, right? They'll actually, right. Uh, the fibroblasts will express muscle proteins for a short period of time that's pulling that wound back together, creating tension. And so they're really dynamic and activated in this sense. Uh, and they're producing a lot of growth hormones as well to help, you know, facilitate that area. They're coordinating immune responses, you know, as the immune system arrives to help clear bacteria or anything that's gotten in, they'll help coordinate that. Once that is done, you know, you need the immune system to calm down so that the tissue can grow and heal normally, and they'll help coordinate that process as well. So they do a lot of this coordinating, even though they're you know, been overlooked for a very long time. And they'll do the same thing in the tumor. The tumor will kind of trick them into going into this wound healing state. And they can, you know, the tumor cells can take advantage of what these fibroblasts are doing. Not all of them are helping the tumor. There's actually fibroblasts that are fighting against it as well. If you removed all of the fibroblasts and they've done these experiments, the tumor will actually get worse. In a lot what? of cases, they did that pancreatic cancer. And so this has brought us into this new field of trying to understand, okay, there's not just fibroblasts. Right. There's all sorts of different types of fibroblasts that are doing different jobs in this tumor. And that's what a lot of our work has come down to right now is understanding what are the different populations. We know some are trying to contain the tumor. Uh -huh. Some are being manipulated by the tumor in a way that's helping it grow or shutting down the immune system. You know, if the tumor cells can't shut it down themselves, they can get fibroblasts to help them shut it down. Wow. So it's very dynamic interplay going on um, that is very in tightly interwoven with the immune response. And we think is a big reason why certain cancer types like pancreatic, for instance, have been almost completely uh, immune to immunotherapy. Right, it like, Immun that. like like resistant to the therapies. You've made it through this video and I am super stoked. Hopefully you feel a lot more knowledgeable and even somewhat comfortable about the crazy world of cancer. If you did, like, comment, but especially just share, if nothing else, to get this information out so that hopefully people are less intimidated by something that's as scary as cancer would be a big win. And we look forward to seeing you here next time.